edition of After Raw. I'm your host, Greg Chance. I'm going to be bringing you Monday Night Raw recaps each and every week. Try to post them up by 12 o'clock. So that would be Tuesday a.m. Um, I would like to first start off by thanking Ric Flair, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Mean Gene Okerlund, May Young on her 90th birthday, and the New Age Outlaws. I would like to thank these guys for coming and showing up for the Raw Old School. It was very special to see these guys. Although I don't think we've seen the last of the New Age Outlaws by the, according to the announcers, they said they were back. I mean, they look pretty good. I mean, I've definitely seen better, but yeah, they did what they could do in the allowed time frame that they were allowed in. All right, and I would like to start off by first telling you that Jack Swagger has received a lot of backlash from CNN, NBC, and Fox for his political statements made on Monday Night Raw. And as you can see, this has been going on for the last couple of weeks, and as you can see, they're still right out there ranting and raving about their political beliefs. So, I, I, in my very own opinion, I think Vince likes the publicity. I think he gives Jack Swagger a little publicity. Um, uh, Triple H challenging Brock Lesnar. That was pretty good. Uh, he cut a decent promo. I think one of the good, pro better promos of the night. Um, I, however, think that they're going to throw Shawn Michaels in the mix of this. I've been saying it for a while. I don't think Shawn Michaels broke his arm supposedly by Brock Lesnar for nothing. I think maybe in the second, third week before WrestleMania, you're going to see Shawn Michaels come out and announce that he's going to be the special guest referee, which will give it a special little twist to the whole storyline of what Shawn Michaels is going to do. Um, okay, and uh, Rock versus Cena. These guys have just been cutting promos for too long. I mean, is it just me, or is it getting boring? In my opinion, there's nothing really left these guys can say. I mean, they're not touching each other. So, really, what's left? I really hope that something happens dramatically over these next couple of weeks. I really think that you have to turn one of them face, one of them heel. Okay, and I would also like to talk about what they're going to do with people like Randy Orton, people like... Sheamus, there's no, there's not going to be a uh, Money in the Bank match. They have a pay-per-view for that, so that's not going to happen. So it just, uh, I'm clueless as to why. I mean, what are they going to put them in a triple threat? I mean, a uh, three-on-three tag match, which is absolutely meaningless. And then, which brings me to my last point. I was right. I've been predicting this for a couple months. You were going to see CM Punk. First, The Undertaker, streak on the line. And I've been saying this for a while now. The streak will come to an end. CM Punk will have his hand raised. One, two, three. They've been planning this for a while, if you think about it. They've been doing everything in their power to make Punk look like a bad guy. I mean, from everything from Jerry the King Lawler's heart attack to tonight breaking up Mae Young's 90th birthday party. <coughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. CM Punk and Undertaker are friends outside of wrestling. CM Punk is a smaller guy. So, therefore, he can have a much better match. I see the outcome of, obviously, CM Punk getting his hand raised. Maybe the next Monday Night Raw, Undertaker coming out and saying, I've tried my best, guys. I think I'm going to call it a career on the next year's Hall of Fame. will be nothing but The Undertaker. Diver de deservingly so. It will be nothing. It will be all about The Undertaker. And a lot of people have been coming up to me and saying, well, then his whole legacy has gone. No, guys. His legacy will always be he won 20 WrestleManias in a row. 20 WrestleManias in a row he got to get his hand raised. That is quite the accomplishment. And then he's The Undertaker. It's not like he's never held titles before. I mean, in the top five, he, out of all the wrestlers, he's certainly top five. That's nothing to... You know, nothing to spit on. I mean, the man is stuck with Vince McMahon through thick and thin. He's never went anywhere. So, that's basically my recap on Raw. Um, it was a good show. I happen to hate that it's three hours. Um, I think they could put everything that they have good going on in the two hours, and there wouldn't be a dull moment. Um, which brings me to my next point. Okay, they keep having three-hour Raws. They're... 
putting all this talent out there. The, yeah, they're growing new talent. But what's going to happen when you keep having three-hour pay-per-views and some of these talents aren't getting into the pay-per-views? I think, personally, they're going to start jumping ship over to TNA. Now, will TNA and Hulk Hogan know how to use them? No, they're not in my opinion, no. But still, the simple fact of just one or two superstars that Vince McMahon built jump ship. And I think maybe that'll be enough to go back to two, two, two hour Raws. Um, I'll just let you guys know a little bit about myself. I, uh, my favorite wrestler is Shawn Michaels. He was my favorite since I was a little boy. I remember seeing him with the Rockers, the bright colors and their high flying moves. It was, you know, not, nobody ever seen anything like that before. And, you know, it caught my eye as a six, seven year old little boy. And then he put Marty Jannetty through the glass window. That was the defining moment to where I was like, this guy's metal. You never seen anything like that before. Uh, I remember my parents and my grandparents just going nuts that they couldn't believe Shawn Michaels would do something like that. I think I was even told to turn my head. And then growing up, he's just the man. I mean, I think he's the best wrestler, pound for pound. I don't think he's the best entertainer. I think he's in the top three of entertaining. I think Rock and Stone Cold have him being in that aspect. I wasn't happy the way Shawn Michaels went out. Um, I don't think he should have went out losing. I mean, that that's why I predicted Shawn Michaels not to lose The Undertaker the last time they wrestled because I didn't think he was going to go out like that. He says that he's accomplished everything in the business that he wants. So he says he's content. He's got a hunting show. I personally don't watch his hunting show because I want him that show to fail so I can see him back in the WWE. I mean, he's got a family. A beautiful wife. He's got a lot going on for him. We wish you well, Sean. But I would love to see one more match, as would many thousands, if not millions of fans would like to see one more riot match, perhaps against The Rock. That would be metal. Um, my favorite WCW wrestler is Diamond Dallas Page, that diamond cutter. Um, I will never forget the match when he fought Hulk Hogan on Monday Nitro. Um fought Goldberg at Halloween Havoc. And as you do research on Diamond Dallas Page, the man is a saint. I mean, look what he's doing with Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. He's turning basically drug addicts to the bottom of the barrel, turning them in and giving them a new life, giving them new meaning. You can follow them on YouTube. Diamond Dallas Page has got his own page. He, he's trying to help Kevin Nash right now as we speak. Um... Right now, I know both of those guys are retired, so I would have to say my favorite guy right now is Randy Orton. Like I said, he's not getting much of a push, but he's one hell of a wrestler. His mic skills aren't that great, but yeah, he's still got good 10, 12 years of entertaining us, so i like to see him get back up to the top where he was. Um, TNA, I would have to go with James Storm, even though he's not being used properly, but he's got the skills. He's got the mic skills. He's got... Very good wrestling skills for his physique. Um, I don't really, I mean, I'm not too particularly fond on TNA, as you can see. All right, I think that's going to wrap up our show. If you like what you heard, um, you can also find me on RogerAndGregSportsTalk.com. Or if you're looking for sports talk, you can find Rod, uh, on RogerAndGregSportsTalk.com. We also have a Facebook page, Roger and Greg Sports Talk. Um, all right, guys, I thank you for taking some time and listening to me. Um, I'll see you next Monday night. Thanks, guys.